Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And my cards for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which I'm light on as usual. The Color Throwdown Challenge goes live every Wednesday. As always, I will have a link to it in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. All the info will be in there if you guys want to play along, all the inspiration, etc. And for this week's one, I went with like a fall theme because like, well, the color challenge was kind of fall themed. And I used a couple of the new Distress Mica stains along with, um, I think this one came out last year. They're all still available because they were all kind of re-released. So I used um, Distress Mica stains, Distress inks, did some ink smushing on die cuts, including my favorite mushrooms, the Simon Says Stamp, uh, little mushroom stems, wafer die set that I've done a ton of videos on. I'll have a link to that playlist at the end of this video. And yeah, just keep watching and I will show you guys how I made these cards. I started by doing all my die cutting before I even started filming. Because like I've been saying in recent videos, especially if I'm doing multiples, that's just boring. It's boring to film. And it's just boring to watch the same thing like over and over again. <laughs> so I die cut all my pieces and then I laid out my um, Tim Holtz media surface mat. And I'm going to start with the florals, of course, which is the little sunflower bloom. Wait for dying. I've used this in a couple of videos already as well. And I just I love it. It's just cute. So I started with uh, carved pumpkin distress ink. And I just smushed that onto the uh, media surface mat. And then I shook up the mulled cider mica stain because you need to shake those up really, really, really well. Make sure there's none of the mica sitting in the bottom of the bottle because otherwise you will clog the nozzle. So shook it up really well, sprayed that, sprayed a little bit of water as well, and then got ink smushing. Now, I personally, and I've talked about this before, I like to die cut first and then do my ink smushing because I like to see where everything's going. But you can totally do just do a panel, do a background, whatever, and then die cut it to your heart's content afterwards. That's fine too. Um, if you do a background, it's a little less messy because doing it this way, you, you, unless you wear gloves, like if you want to put on a pair of gloves and just protect your hands, that's fine. It all washes off eventually. It's just, I, I was covered. <laughs> And it's wonderful when it's like oranges, greens, and browns. So I was just, I was covered in sludge by the end of it, but psh, it do, it washes off. Just takes a bit. Honestly, the best way to wash it off is actually take like a loofah. There is a Ranger product that's like a very abrasive little tool. I forget off the top of my head, but one of you guys can tell me in the comments. There's a tool and it works. You just, with that one, you have to be careful with it. It's kind of, it's similar to like an actual pumice stone, but it's even more abrasive and it will remove ink from your hands, but it'll remove the skin too, if you're not careful. But what I find actually really works is just um, a loofah, you know, and some gentle soap and you just rub your hands really well with that and it will take off pretty much all ink. So yeah, same with like hand sanitizer. That works too. I think most of us probably have like multiple lifetime supplies of hand sanitizer at this point. Um, but yeah, there's some ideas, but at the same, I just, it comes off with a very short amount of time for me because I'm always washing my hands, you know, all the things. Anywho, with all of these die cuts, I wasn't aiming for my typical, like when I do ink smushing and I talk about this, I love like layering it up in that really textured, speckly, you know, all of that. I love it. But that's w not what I was fully aiming for with these. It was more just getting the color down. And between the ink, the water and the mica stains, I'm going to get like, there is going to be that variation in that texture. And at the end of the video, I'll, you know, turn my flash on to show the shimmer because it's amazing. But for the brown bits, I used vintage photo and then the fallen acorn mica stain. And I'll have links to everything that I used in the description box below the video as well as on my blog because I still get, you know, comments every once in a while like, what was this? What was this? And always. I always link to everything under my videos and on my blog. And in the rare, rare times I forget, that's the one, you know, thing that someone asks about. <laughs> I'm like, ah, anyway. Anyway, for the um, undersides of the mushrooms and the stems, I used just antique linen uh, distress ink. And for the stems, I also added some tea dye distressing. I didn't add any mica stain, anything like that. I totally could have, but 
I just didn't bother because um, these are very small little elements and like the florals and the centers and the tops of mushrooms and then the greenery when I do it, those are all going to have shimmer. Everything's going to be amazing. It's all good. So again, just smushing my inks, adding some water, smushing my little die cut pieces and just having a grand old time. This is one of my favorite things to do. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that no matter what you do, every piece is going to look different. Whether you're doing die cuts or like actual full backgrounds, you can use the same inks, same colors, same everything. It will never look the same no matter what you do. And I think that's probably why I enjoy it so much. It's different every time. So it keeps me from getting bored because that, that happens very, very easily. So um, after I would do each little like cluster of die cuts, I'd set them all aside to dry. For the greenery, I use the stems from the etched layered daisy stem. That one I've done a ton of videos on as well. I use just the stem and then the actual like leaves. That's the etched laurel leaves, which I've also used in a bunch of videos because I love it. And the ink was mowed lawn, distress ink. And then the mica stain was the wicked elixir. I love the names of them all too especially the Halloween ones, but really all of them. I just love them. So did all of my inky, smushy, messy goodness. And yeah, yeah. If I could just do this all day, every day, it'd be fun. <laughs> so once I did all that, I let all of the pieces dry. Once they were dry for the little sunflowers, this is the one time I didn't actually double up the sunflowers usually I die cut them twice and you know rotate them to really fill them out but this time I was like you know I'm just going to use them as is they're cute and um I die cut extra mushrooms because originally I was only going to make one card but then as like things were coming together I'm like nope this can definitely be two cards and so then I've got a couple little extra mushrooms I'll just set them aside and use them on some future project so the Flower centers for those little sunflowers, I popped up with thin foam squares and I did the same thing with the mushrooms. I just glued the stem to the little underside there and then put little thin foam squares on the back of the little tops or the mushroom caps and then adhered those into place. So everything's got just a little bit of extra dimension as well. And I left off the stems for the flowers because I'll do that at the end because I'm never sure until I'm really like fully assembling everything. It's like, do I want the stem long? Do I want to trim it short? All of those things. So I just set all of that aside once I was done assembling it. And I die cut um, scraps of Simon's orange peel cardstock with the CZ Design Scripty Hello Wafer Die. This wafer die and the embossing folder that I use later come in the Simon Says Stamp September card kit. They are available individually. I think at the moment this wafer die sold out though, but they are available individually. So I'll link to the kit, but I'll also link to these individually. And with the sentiments, I only stacked two layers together. I left the third of each one aside. There's a method to the madness. So I stacked two together with my craft tacky glue. I put them into my splat box and I'm spraying these with that mulled cider mica stain. Oh, this color, this color is so good for fall and for Halloween, all, all of them. All of them don't make me pick a favorite because I won't, I won't. That's why I own them all because I bought them all. <laughs> you guys know me. And if you don't, hi, welcome. I like to have all the colors of all the things. Do, just, do you all need all the colors of all the things? No, you know, pick what you like. Because people ask me that a lot. I get a lot of emails and questions about that. Like, what colors do you recommend? I am the last person on the planet you should be asking that. I'm not even kidding. Because I like them all. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a long time to get all the colors of things. You know, I got a budget. But yeah, it's, that's just, it's always been who I am. If it comes in, you know, 500 colors, I'm going to work my way to getting all 500 colors. Because it's just, I like it. I like it. Anyway, anyway, you saw me spray the die cuts and then I used the third one to adhere behind the vellum outline. That just makes it easier to adhere it to my card. I got distracted by talking about colors. Anyway, that's what I did and I've shown that in a ton of videos. So after I did the sentiments, I'm going to emboss just some white cardstock and I'm using that uh, crisscross floral 
embossing folder. Again, this is what comes in the September card kit, but it's available individually. And like I always do with specifically Simon's, because every brand of embossing folders is different. But with Simon's, I have my original Spellbinders platform and I have two metal shims. You could use cardstock, that's fine. And then I always spritz my cardstock with a bit of water. I lay out my flower sack cloth and that's just to keep me from getting water everywhere. And I lightly spritz the cardstock with water because it helps soften the paper fibers, stick it in my folder, run it through the machine. And then I've got my fabulous embossed image. And this embossing folder I think might become um, a favorite. Although I, I, again, don't make me choose favorites with embossing folders. I love them. I have so much fun with them, but I like ones like this that are very like just a simple pattern, you know, cause it's like, oh, this can work for anything. You know, it's not a floral, it's not a, an image of any sort. It's just a nice pattern and it can work for whatever you want it for. So after I'd embossed the white cardstock, I cut it down. So there, these panels ended up being like three and three quarters by five. Yeah. And then you can't see it, but off camera I had done, and I've talked about this. I had done a little, I laid everything out on the other panel. And then that gave me an idea of like where I want, you know, the greenery and the florals and all the things to go. So then I'm just following that. It's kind of in the upper left corner there. As I'm adhering this one, it just makes, so it looks like, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, yeah, because off camera, I fiddled around with the layout. So got it all adhered and everything I'm just adhering with Craft Hacky Glue to the background. And then once I get these uh, mushrooms adhered into place, the sentiment, because I put that third die cut on the back of the um, vellum, it's so much easier to add adhesive to just that. I've shown in many videos, like just carefully following the, the word die cut, whatever it is, with my glue, because glue shows through vellum. I don't care what they say. There are adhesives that claim that, you know, they're, they don't show through vellum. Yeah, no. All adhesive shows through vellum. That's just, it's vellum. It's what it is. So there's always ways to work around it. And this is one of them. Plus having the die cut on the back, it pops up just a teeny bit, gives it a little extra bit of dimension. So the vellum kind of floats a little more and it just adds to it. So I adhered the sentiment, did the second card front. My card bases are uh, Nina Desert Storm cardstock because mm, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. So I just cut a sheet of that in half, scored it in half again. So these are top folding A2 sized cards, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I stuck the card bases into my Misty and I am inking up a sentiment from the so talkative set. This is another oldie but goodie that came out years ago. Um, and I inked up a sentiment with Crackling Campfire Distress Oxide ink. This is another color that's just perfection for fall and Halloween. So I stamped that on the inside and then I adhered the card fronts to the card bases again just using craft tacky glue and then no shock or surprise here I'm using Studio Cadia Moss Green Pearls. I've used them in a ton of videos but they're like the perfect shade of green and they go with everything. <laughs> so once I got my card fronts adhered I pulled out my bling and then um had to fiddle and you know get everything where I wanted it. So once I was happy with the placement of everything, I repeat it on the second card. So I work on one, figure out where I want all the little bits and pieces, and then just repeat on the second or third or however many I'm making at the time. And then adhere them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. Once those are adhered, the cards will be complete. And then, like I said, I will pull out the flashlight to try and show the sparkle. It's so hard to show sometimes on camera, but the mica stains are super fun and they just give, <sighs> they're just so pretty. I love them. So yeah, we've got like texture and shimmer and sparkle and texture from the die cuts themselves and then from the inks and the water and all the things and the 3D embossing folder and all of it. Like so much fun. So there's the sparkle. Isn't that beautiful? I love the mica stains. Love them. Anyway, like I said in the intro, I will have a link below the video. So just expand the description box. I'll have a link to my blog post. In the blog post, there'll be a link to color to the color throwdown challenge. I'll have the pictures. I'll have picture links. All of that will be in the blog post. There will also be a supply list 
with links to all the supplies I used. That'll be just directly below as well. Links to my social medias, all the things. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for watching, thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.